Hello there, I'm Jimmy Vegas, and in this mini Unity Fab tutorial, I'm going to show you how you can create Snowfall. So I have this little scene set up here, it's just a terrain with a white texture and a first person controller. And the way I'm going to do this is technically by a, uh, using a particle system, but we'll be doing it rather manually rather than using the default particle system here. The reason I do it manually is because I feel it gives more control. If you want to use the default particle system, by all means do. It's laid out slightly differently, but the options are still going to be the same. So game object and create empty. And in this empty object, we need to put three different components, a particle renderer, particle animator, and a particle emitter. So we could do that by clicking on add component. And I'm going to type for the first one, renderer. And it's there, particle renderer. Next one is going to be the animator, so particle animator. Last one, as I said, is going to be the emitter, which is right there, particle emitter. Now the particle renderer doesn't matter too much, the settings on there aren't too important at this time. Hopefully you should see at the moment we have this kind of lots of pink at the moment because there's no texture, no material on there, so you'll have kind of fluttering pink around. So firstly, let's set this to pure white and have no alpha. So make sure your alpha is 255 and you are white. So your hex color is going to be all the Fs. And the same with that one. And the fourth one as well. So all of them, pure white. So further down, we have something called RND force as well as force. Now the force here determines which way the particles are going to fall. So as this is snow, we want them to fall downwards from the center of where they are. So this would be a negative figure. So let's change this to minus one. So we can see that it's already kind of falling downwards. So obviously the higher this number is, the higher the force on the downward. You can also change the X to give it kind of blustery feel. And the same applies to the Z. So you can see it kind of blustering towards us here. So I'm gonna keep it as zero for now. The random force, let's have as one on the X and one on the Z. Won't notice too much at the moment, but if we were to change that to say perhaps 10, you can see that it's given a kind of, how can I explain it? It's kind of blustering it around randomly. So the higher that is, the more it blusters it around yet again. So I'm going to have that as one and one just for now. So as we go further down, we have the emitter. This determines the size and the frequency of our snow. So in this case, the minimum size, I'm going to set as, let's have, let's have it as 0 0.1, but let's have the max size as 0 0.5. So now you can see that the squares over here, the pink ones, kind of randomize between the different sizes. The energy, don't worry about this too much. We'll have as 5 as minimum, and let's say 50 as maximum. You won't notice a difference here at the moment. Next, let's have the emissions. So the emissions is, the, I suppose, the frequency. Let's have it as 500, <coughs> excuse me, and 1000. So now it just looks like a big pink blob. Last thing we need to really play around with <coughs> is going to be down here, which is the, I think it's pronounced ellipsoid. And it's going to be how wide and how far the snow can fall. So at the moment it's set to one by one, which is just here. If we set it to 100 by 100, you should be able to see this is the area of snowfall. If we bring this up into the sky, it still looks a bit chaotic because of the texture. So let's sort out that texture. I have this snowflake here. This is just a texture and I've created this material from it. And this material used particles additive as the shader which is just here. You can use additive soft or multiply and multiply double depending on your texture. So try all of them four before you complain and say, oh, the snow's not quite working. So as I say, this one is additive. And I want to drag and drop this snowflake onto game object. You can see we now have snowflakes. If we press play, we can see the snow is starting to fall. 
So it looks like a pretty wintry scene, as you would expect. And that's pretty good. So I'm going to hit escape on here. And I'm now going to go to that game object and change a couple of things. So with this force, as I said, we can change how quickly it falls down. So if we decrease this even more, you can see that the snow falls much quicker. I want to change the emissions to see if it matters too much at the moment. So let's have it as 5,000 and 50,000. So it doesn't make too much of a difference. You can see that it's kind of falling quicker. So I'm going to set this back as minus one. Uh, change the force on the X. You can see it is very blustery there. Same with the other way. So set that back to zero. And the random force, obviously, if you change this, it gives it that kind of blustery feel yet again. Uh, size, yeah, it doesn't matter too much with this one. It just depends on how large you want your area to be of your snowfall. Another good way of sorting things out is if you duplicate that snowfall, you can see here that it has massively increased the amount of snow. So depending on how you want to handle your snowfall, it might be worth having two possible game objects. So all these settings here are free for you to play around with, depending on how you want your snow to appear and how you want your snow to fall. If you're in a blizzard, then obviously you would have more force. So that is something to play around with. So guys, that is how you create a decent snowfall system in your game. Thank you very much for watching.